Hey y'all, Sai here. I am going to be making an intarsia. It's this one. It's a Judy Gale Roberts pattern. And it's a red lined pattern that she has on her website that you can download for free. So if anybody else wants to make it, you can go there at Judy Gale Roberts page and download this. I'll leave a link in the description below. I took the pattern and I cut it up into pieces. Yes, sir. And I'm going to put each piece on a piece of wood. I always have a hard time picking out the pieces of wood. But I think I found some I really like. And we have some uh, construction going on, so it's kind of loud. So I'll probably just be uh, voiceovering the rest of this. So I laid out the pieces on the wood, looking at the grain patterns of the wood and the recommended direction of the grain for the piece, as noted on the pattern, with a little arrow. Then I started feeding my pieces through my sticker machine. Then my sticker machine jammed up, but I was able to get the paper out. It was wrinkly, but my pieces looked fine, and they stuck onto the wood just fine. But I decided to go back to my adhesive spray and just stick the pattern directly to the wood. That sticker incident was enough for the day. I'll try to deal with that sticker machine later. Then I made the pieces of wood a bit more manageable by cutting them down with a little band saw. Then I took all of those pieces to my Hegner scroll saw and turned on my magnification light and cut away. Sanding off all the underside fuzzies and also checking for square on the pieces so that they will sit nice and square and fit together better. For the nose, I used a small piece of paduke and shaped it into a cone. And here are all the pieces. Then I used an awl to punch where the buttons were to go, and where the nose and the eyes go. Then I used the drill to drill some holes, but not all the way through. Then I took the papers off. I used mineral spirits to help remove some that were stuck on there pretty good. Then I started shaping using the big pneumatic drum sander with 100 grit. Marking with a pencil how far I wanted to take a piece down, considering the neighboring pieces and stuff. Hello! So, I am going to use a sanding shim for the owl. I'm going to be showing this in real time, so it might take a while. If you want to jump ahead, I'm going to put the time to jump to down below. And this is like the third or fourth project I've done using sanding shims because um, I just never did it before. And wow, they're amazing. So the, what a sanding shim does is, you see how this owl is all like smooth together? And you know, it's all smoothed together, but you see how this owl, like this piece is just exactly in line with that one. And this one is in line with that one. And this one's in line with all of those. Unlike this, where it's a piece, then a piece, then a piece, then a piece, because it's a snowman. So you don't want that to be all the same um, shape. Well, you want it to be the same shape, but not the same height. I don't know. Do you get it? So what a sanding shim, so I made a sanding shim for the owl, but I don't want the beak. See how the beak sticks out? So I don't want the beak to be on the sanding shim. I suppose it could be, and then you just pull it out a little bit. But, hmm. I guess I could do it that way. 
No, it's too short. See, it's, it's, a, it's a little short piece. So now I'm gonna show you how to do the sanding shim. So I made a little sanding shim that fits the owl here. I'm not doing his feet either because the feet aren't part of that whole piece that is like the same. <laughs> Maybe once I show you, it'll make sense. So all of these pieces here together, we are going to put on the sanding shim and sand them at the same time. So I'm gonna flip that over. Actually, I'm going to do it the way you're not supposed to do it. So you're supposed to flip it over and then tape all the pieces. And, but I'm gonna tape the shim because they're all different heights right now. And it's, you know. Again, there's a ton of different ways to do things, but this is, uh, this is a Judy Gale Roberts. Oh, that's okay. Like I said, you should be putting the pieces, the tape on the pieces, and then putting it on the shim. But I'm doing it differently because my pieces are all different heights. So when I turn it upside down, they're all different heights. And I know we should start with pieces that are the same height, and that is easier. I'm just gonna pop the nose out now because I don't want to sand the nose. Of course, I can't get it out. So let me pull one of these eyes off, and the forehead off, and get the nose out. And I'm gonna just stuff the nose up like that so I can get those back in their proper places. Forehead and the eye. There. All right. It's a little messed up. It's a little messed up. There. Okay. Taking the nose out. Now I'm going to sand all these as one piece. Let me go start my machines up. Let's put it back for a second so I can mark some things because I don't want to make it too low. Oops. Got to put it in the right spot. Okay. So we don't want it lower than... Don't want it lower than the hat. So I'm going to mark where the hat is. We don't want to go lower than that there. But we want to go lower than the feet. So I'll put the mark of that where the feet are. And the branch, another foot. Okay, so we want to go lower than that. All right, here we go. And you gotta hang on to them sometimes because they'll fly off because they aren't attached. You know, they're, you know, they're not. They can fly off easily. Get below that line of the feet and branch. I'm going to glue them together on the inside with each other, piece to piece. Nice. 
Okay, let's start again. Then I continued shaping everything. Then I used the Dremel type thing and shaped the hat. And hand sanded. Then shaped the Paduk carrot nose. I held it with a plier, and that worked out well. Then I went to the flex drum sander, and with 220 grit, I sanded over everything.
And for the pieces I couldn't smooth on the flex drum, I hand sanded. Wally came to visit me, and that makes sanding a bit more difficult, but you can't beat having a little fluff ball on your lap. Well, I need a few dowels for these, and I don't have any walnut dowels, but I have this piece of walnut that's like a square. So I'm going to sharpen the end of it, and then I can use it for all of my dowels. Yay! So I sharpened it. Cut the tip off of it and did that four more times and put them all in place. I am going to add some detail to the ends of the scarf and to the branch arms. And I'm gonna do it on the Wonder Wheel. I might do a little bit with the wood burner too. Judy says she used the wood burner also, so yeah. The Wonder Wheel made nice little grooves that made it look like the strings at the end of the scarf. For the branches, I'm going to draw them on there so I have something to follow. Looks like it's... Although it has some lines already, maybe I'll just follow these natural lines of the wood. Because I kind of like that. I'll give a little bit extra. Yeah, see the natural lines of that wood? Ooh, I think I might not even put some stuff in there because it looks, I, I licked it to see how it was going to look. And anyway, yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I think I won't put these lines on it. I think I won't use the Wonder Wheel. Although I love the Wonder Wheel. I'm gonna take these off. I'll just sand them off. I am going to start working on the eyeballs of the owl. And from this picture, it looks like they, you know, just a little bit, they're flat, but there's a little bit higher than the hole. And I think I need a real sharp pencil for that. Let me get uh, my mechanical pencil. Here's my magnetic bowl that I keep attached to my scroll saw. It's very nice has some little sandpapers in it, my square, some Allen wrenches I might need, my thingy to change my blade, pencils, and the popsicle sticks or tongue depressors. I love this thing. And I keep it right here on Bob. Nice and solid right there. Yeah. All right, so the eyeballs. I'm just gonna make a line right there. And... Right there. And I'll just cut those off on the hanger. These were tiny pieces to cut, but it was just a straight short cut so it was quick and easy. I glued them into the eye and then sanded the end that stuck out. I'm gonna put the old masters on these pieces of the owl and not on the sides just because I'm gonna end up edge gluing it together because it's so small. So I wiped the old masters gel poly on and wiped it off and let it set up for about six hours. In the meantime, I worked on those walnut plugs I made for the buttons and the eyes. I'm going to put pickling white on the snowman body and the snow. And then I'm going to try it on a piece of wood that's the same as the hat, just to see what happens to that. Curious. 
So this pickling white is just like regular stuff as far as application goes. So I wiped it on and wiped it off. And after a while, it really whitens up the wood. And while those were drying, I edge glued the owl parts. Then use the wonder wheel to emphasize more scarf parts. This is the scarf that goes across the neck. Then hand sanded it with 220. Then worked on the tiny beak of the owl. All those other parts were now nice and set up and the beak was the last thing to do on the owl. Then I worked on the buttons and eyes some more and I didn't like them. So I found a dowel and used that instead. Oh, well, these things are not going to work. So I have to make them over again with this. Yes, this will work. They were much better but they were now too light. So I stirred up some dark stain and put it on the eyes. Then stirred up some chestnut stain and put that on the buttons. Then I put Old Masters poly gel on the rest of the pieces, including a coat over the top of the white pieces now that they were all dry and stuff. Then I set out a large piece of paper and sprayed it lightly with an adhesive. Then I put the whole project onto the piece of paper. Then I traced around it, and I like to use a mechanical pencil because the lead doesn't get onto my project, and anyone that uses a mechanical pencil versus a regular pencil will know what I'm talking about. Then I moved the project off the paper and cut out that little pattern then glued it to a thin piece of plywood. I cut that out with a scroll saw and then cleaned off all the glue with some mineral spirits. Then I spray painted the back side of it white. And when that was all dry, I set the project onto the backer and noticed a space between the owl and the snowman that showed the backer behind it. So I marked that spot and cut it out with a scroll saw. Then again, put all the pieces onto the backer. and started gluing the pieces. I glue a few pieces at a time and let them set up for about 20 minutes, then glue on some more pieces. This really helps keep the project pieces from drifting. It takes longer, but it's worth it. Once all of the big pieces were glued and set, then I glued in the buttons and eyes and nose. Then I used the wood burner to add some little dots on the buttons. Sorry, it's blurry. Alrighty, so, C. It's supposed to stand up. Yeah, it stands up, but it's a little bit on the yikes side. So I think I'll add some more snow back here, just to help with it being more stable. Yeah, that'll be cool. That'll work. Then I can add a verse. So I spray painted the extra snow and then tried to put an ink transfer onto it. The verse I put is Job 38:22. It says, have you entered the storehouses of the snow or have you seen the storehouses of the hail? But the ink never dried on the painted surface. So I ended up wiping it off and writing the verse address on the bottom, which I never got a picture of. I'm sorry. Then I glued the extra snow to the back side. Well, the snowman's all done. Yay! And adding that little bit on the back uh, made it stand up much, much more sturdy. Much sturdier. Did I mention that this is a free pattern by Judy Gale Roberts? All you have to do is go to her website and you can download it. It was great fun making this. And thanks for joining me. So we'll see you next time. Bye!